Well, hello everyone. Today I want to talk to you about the uh, add explosion force method on the rigid body API. According to Unity's uh, documentation, this method it can apply forces to rigid bodies to simulate an explosion. And the documentation also talks a little bit about the internals of the function. And so there's some nuanced information there in the documentation. Let me go ahead and bring it up here really quick. Here it is. And so I think one of the main things here, not one of the main things, but one of the points is that the force is applied to the point that is closest to the center of the explosion. I think that's important to keep in mind because that can send your object tumbling around or rotating around, or it can push it right in the middle, you know? So um, it is an explosion. So usually what you want is a natural effect. And so um, there's not a whole lot of control there, but it's important to keep in mind, right? Um, there is a force factor, right? That goes from the explosion center to the point of impact. I think that's important as well. I think just keep that in mind. So all that, all that is very important. Over here in the documentation, um, it shows a little bit of simple implementation of the code. And we're gonna be doing something very similar on our script uh, with, a little, with a few modifications to it. So then um, we can add some explosion effects to it. We can add some visual effects to it. Okay, so let's go ahead and just run the project really quick so we can see the final result. I added a couple buttons here so it's easy to reload. So let's go ahead and fire it. It takes 1.5 seconds for it to explode. You see there's the object, the, the object goes away. There's a, an explosion, there's a little bit of fire. Go ahead and do that again. And there it goes, okay? So that's what we're gonna be building today. Let me go ahead and stop. And let's take a look at our current scene right now. On the environment, just built a simple environment with um, a few cubes to represent the floor, walls, left and right. There are a couple lights, you know, to make it look nice. And then um, for the cubes, I have a bunch of, I guess originally they were orange cubes, but not now they're white. So I had called them orange cubes initially, but there's nothing to them. All they have is a box collider and they have a rigid body to them. Everything is left is left with the default values besides the interpolation here. I set to interpolate and the collision detection to continuous to continuous dynamic. I like those settings. I have another video. I have another video that talks about that actually. So and the reason why I chose those. Not the reason why I chose those in this video, but there's a reason why I like them. And then there's a, a probably I can probably leave a description here somewhere. So uh, a link so then you can go check that out. Anyways, all of these cubes are exactly the same. I just arrange them in the scene in this way. Uh, let's talk about the buttons. I have a couple buttons on the scene. Uh, the first button is the reload button and the other one is the fire button. The reload button has a clicked event over here. And I have a game object called the game manager with a script. And there's a single function on that script. Let's go ahead and open that really quick. And all it does, you don't even need this stuff in here. Let me go ahead and remove that. Control S to save. And all I'm doing is exposing a public method here called reload scene, where the scene manager just reloads the scene. Okay. It's very simple. And the just I just save that script so it's reloading recompiling, I guess. And on the canvas, so that button reload here, there is a click event that calls the game manager and the function being called on the game, man game manager is the uh, uh, reload scene. There's also a button fire. This button fire calls the bomb game object. Uh, there's a script there called the bomb script and there is a public function called fire and that starts the timer for the bomb to explode. We can control that timer right now. It's set to 1.5 seconds, but we can control it to something a lot less. Okay, so this is interesting, the bomb itself. So the bomb has a bomb script, has a audio source, because um, the sound of the bomb. Actually, I am not using the audio source. I can, I can remove this, sorry about that. We're not using that in there. We have the audio source on the actual explosion. Um, Anyways, the bomb has a capsule, a capsule collider and he has a bomb script. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this bomb script. 
Uh, oh, before we go, we go there, there are a few variables that I expose here on the editor. The first one is the explosion radius. That is how far the explosion is going to um, reach objects in the scene. We have an explosion force. I set it to 300 right now. You can play around with that value to see what feels right for you. There is a upwards modifier. So this is an interesting thing on the um, add explosion force method that sends the object sends the object going up as well. So there is a there's a shift on the y axis, and this value actually shifts the explosion down, so we, the object can go up in value. The time delay is the control for how long it takes after I click the fire button for the explosion to actually happen. And then there are two special effects here. One is the small explosion and the other one is the tiny, tiny flames that show up after the explosion. These are coming from, so if you go to the asset store and you look for particle pack under the uh, Unity technology, that's where you get these um, special effects from. Okay, so what, what, what are we doing here? We are looking at the bomb script. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. As you just saw, these right here, I have set as public, public variables. So then you can see them on the editor. You can set them manually. They also have default values right now. The fire function is the one that when we click, <clears throat> excuse me, when we click on the button, this is what actually gets triggered, right? And that triggers a, a coroutine, okay, with the explode method. And when the first line here on line 21 is the yield return new wait for seconds. So not wait for seconds, but wait for these seconds to pass before, before you execute this other lines. So right now we have it set to 1.5 seconds. So that is going to wait for that. And the first thing that it's going to do it's going to instantiate both of these. It's going to instantiate both of these. <clears throat> excuse me. It's going to instantiate both of these particle effects. Okay, the explosion and the flames at the same time. Now on line twenty-seven, this is the location of the explosion. This is really important. This is where the explosion actually is taking place. And then we're using this overlap sphere here on the physics class to create a sphere, just picture it as a sphere being created inside of the game. And it's going to detect which colliders it has collided with, if you will. And when we get a list of every object that has a rigid body that has a collider attached to it, then we're going to iterate that list, we're going to iterate it. And we're going to pull the rigid body out of that collider. And then if that rigid body is not null, because there is a possibility that is null, then we're going to call that add explosion force. So you see, this is interesting because the bomb is actually the thing applying the force to the objects that are around it. So there is no script on the orange cubes. The script to act that actually applies the force is on the bomb itself. So this makes a lot of sense. It's very intuitive um, to be done this way. The first, the first, the first uh, parameter that we pass in here is the explosion force. That's the 300 number up there. The explosion position. We are setting the explosion, the explosion position to the position of the game object on the scene, which makes sense, right? That's where the bomb is. That's the source of that explosion. The explosion radius. It's how far that explosion is going to reach. And then the upwards modif modifier, as I mentioned earlier, that is the thing that actually is going to, you don't have to pass it, but that's the thing that it's actually going to send things up in the air, not only just sideways, okay? Just gives a little more of a, a natural effect. What's really important too, if you read the Unity documentation, is that the add explosion force takes into account the position, the radius, and the distance of the object being hit. So the force in which the explosion hits your object depends on how far your game object is from that explosion position, okay? So if you're right at the edge of that explosion position, let's say that we are setting the explosion radius to five, so five units away from the explosion center, and you set your object right there, 
there is a minimal amount of force that is going to hit that object. But if you're right against that, that um, explosion position, then you're gonna get the full force of that explosion. The destroy object is a function to actually remove that capsule from the um, game. So it just, I mean, you're probably very familiar with this. You probably used this a thousand times, right? So it just removes the object. So it looks like exploded, it's gone and, and stuff like that. Um, I think another thing too that is important to mention here is the, it's going to be under Unity Technology, Unity Technologies, and it's the tiny explosion. I made a change to the small explosion, sorry. I made a change to the small explosion and I added a audio source to it. Um, I, I, I have this bomb SFX from a different game, a different package that I, I actually purchased this a long time ago. So you can use any kind of bomb noise in the game to make it sound like there is a bomb. And then instead of controlling this via script, all I do is set this to play on awake. So whenever you instantiate this bomb effect, the sound comes with it. So I think that's pretty much it. It's really straightforward. Um, let's go ahead and just play one more time. And there it is. We can change the time that passes. So instead of 1.5 seconds, let's just send it to, let's set it to five seconds and let's make this explosion just a little stronger, 500. And let's play with that. Since things flying away a little further. And then we have our flames there at the end. Okay. Well, I think we reached the end of this video. Let me just say this to you. I am eager to make more of these videos and I want to know what you want to know about. So if you have a chance, leave a comment below. Just let me know what are you interested in knowing about Unity and perhaps I, if it's in my domain of knowledge, I can actually make a video about. So thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.